If you work with a laser, you don't always measure the full power. Sometimes you have optics or attenuator that comes in between. How to manage this? With a correction factor. In this year wiki, I will show you how and why you should apply a correction factor. Welcome to Gentech EO Academia. I'm Charles Zuma from Gentech EO, your partner for accuracy. There are two typical situations where you'll want to apply a correction factor on your laser energy or power measurement. The first one is when you work with an attenuator and you must find how much the actual energy or power hits the sensor. The second one is when you have an old unit and you want to compare it to a sensor with a fresh calibration. I will now take time to explain the first one. To find the energy uh, or the power measurement that you have with an attenuator, it's very easy to find because the linearity in power of all our sensors are very, very good. So you just have to find this factor at a lower power or energy level, and there's no risk to damage the detector. With my setup that I have installed, I have an XLP12 with an OD1 filter installed in front of it with a laser that I don't know the real power. Since I have the filter without any correction factor that is applied. The power that I read is 1.1 milliwatt, but now I will remove it to see what is the actual power that is coming out of the laser. It is 9.7 something milliwatt. And if I do the calculation, 9.07 divided by 1.1 milliwatt, I get a correction factor of 8.24 milliwatt that I will apply to find the exact accurate power that I have out of this. So I go to the correction factor that I can apply on the Miro and here I apply the correction factor that is 8.25 to see the actual power that is coming out of the laser even if I use some optics to attenuate the full power. Then I can increase the power or the power to a higher level. From this I will not damage the power meter and I will get accurate measurement that is NIC traceable. The logic is the same when you want to perform a measurement with an energy meter that comes with an attenuator that is in front. It's a QED attenuator that we have there. For the second instance, you will want okay, to apply a correction factor to stretch the time between the two calibration. To do so, you need a device with a fresh calibration and a unit that you'll consider or a unit that you consider your gold unit. From this, you measure with your unit with a fresh calibration, and then you'll, be, you'll keep the same laser with the same setup to replicate the same parameters to measure the two power meter as you swap them. From this, you will find a correction factor if there's some difference between the two, and you will be able to take a note of this and keep, keep note and track of the older device what is the difference between the new. Keep in mind that if the calibration drifted more than 5%, it's time to send it back to Gentech EO Service Center for a recalibration that you should do every 12 months. That's all there is to it. Now, if you'll understand that it's easy to apply a correction factor and what you measure with a correction factor, it is still traceable with Gentech EO accuracy. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to this channel to find more expert tips on how to achieve the most accurate laser beam measurements for your application. Thanks for watching.